I've got a guest. <laughs> I'm still just cracking up about this. Welcome to the very first Craft Leftovers live stream. I'm super excited to be here with you all today. Um, and y'all in the future, because this will be available as a podcast a little later on. And uh, we'll go ahead and let it be on the uh, YouTube channel for Craft Leftovers. So feel free to watch the replay later, and thanks for stopping by in the aftermath. This is Gregory. This is Craft Cat. Uh, for those of you who aren't watching right now, oh my gosh, he's purring so loud. Uh, he is a big, fluffy... Maine Coon, Norwegian Forest Cat, Tabby something something, cuddly as can be, and he is just perched up right behind me <laughs> as I'm doing this today. He's so funny. Um, welcome. Welcome to the Craft Leftovers live stream. I'm Kristen Roach, and I'm the creator of craftleftovers.com, <laughs> cat lover, published book author, uh, mend it better right over here. It's the 10 year anniversary of my book this year and I'm also the owner of Little Woods Herbal. He is headbutting me fierce right now. It's like he knows he's on. Um, <laughs> anyway, so Mend It Better is really why I decided to go ahead and, and do this. I It felt too, it, a bunch of things aligned, too much so to just let it pass. He's got his hand on me now. Oh my goodness, there's a little paw. He's like, come on, you need to keep petting me. Um, <laughs> Dude, cat, back off. Okay. Um, yeah, all right, well, I'm just going to give in to his sweet, sweet cuddles. Here he comes. Yeah, he's just going to sit on my lap. You might actually hear him purr a little bit because of where he is sitting in relationship to the microphone. Okay, so here is the format, what we're gonna do today. First, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what's on the horizon for Craft Leftovers, why I decided to start a YouTube channel, live stream, and everything else. Then I'm gonna show you what I'm mending, and I'm gonna talk about planning for artists, creative types, uh, crafty entrepreneurs, just people who like to craft a lot, or people just like to get a lot of stuff done like I do. Uh, pretty frequently, the f after a short time of getting to know me and getting to know kind of like the depth of my projects, people are like, how do you get all this done? It doesn't just happen by accident. It takes a lot of planning um, or planning so things can happen by accident when the opportunity arises. Uh, we're going to talk a bit about that in a little bit once I get mending. Today I am super excited for my project because it is this gorgeous retro polyester deep brown and orangey red trimmed dress. And what is so funny is I was so excited to get this thing. I want to say I maybe picked this up in San Francisco in the Mission District at this thrift store that was amazing and I have no idea what it was called um and the first time I wore this dress was at the Roach Motel Zine Distro in Des Moines and my friend's like hey I think there's did you forget to zip up your zipper <laughs> and the side seam of this thing had completely split open oh my gosh so what you can see here if you can see it is the side seam has a bunch of impromptu safety pins. I think I used a bent paper clip. This looks like maybe a fishing hook. I mean, I was desperate to get this thing closed up and make myself decent. I didn't have anything else to wear. And I had a whole day of hosting <laughs> a zine festival. It was wild. I mean, it was super fun though. Um, Sorry if I just bumped the mic. This is a whole thing I'm getting used to. I might just move this up a little bit so it's like less in the danger zone. Anyway, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. I'm great to get it back in action so I can wear it to work and or just wear it for fun. Wear it to the podcast, whatever. Wear it to the live stream. So going back around to the beginning, 
why do this? It's been 10 years. You may or may not know if this is the first time you're coming across craft leftovers or coming across myself, is that uh, I started a craft blog back in 2006 called craftleftovers.com. It's still around and um, kind of moved up in the craft industry, published in uh, things like interweave knits, knit scene, craft zine at the time, make zine. Um, I think I did a thing right. It doesn't matter. Um, contributed to other authors' books and was kind of steadily, steadily moving through the ranks. Got a book deal, got my book published, and then I just kind of dropped out of sight for a while with good reason, which I will tell you the full, bizarre, interesting story of um, for the first Craft Leftovers podcast in about two weeks' time. And, but for now, let's just say I've been kind of out of the industry for a while, about eight years. And a year ago, I started, I rebooted the blog. I started crafting big time again, got really back into it. And I started to feel this urge to get back out there. Uh, it just so happened that was aligning with the 10 year anniversary of Mend It Better. There we go, thumb in the right direction. I'm pointing behind me at my book. And, and then it was like, what good timing? Let's just go for it. So I was thinking about all the different ways that I could kind of relaunch the blog. And the first thing was getting the pattern archive back intact. A lot of the PDFs had gone missing. And so I'm working with that or working on that with my studio assistant. You can sign up for the newsletter and get updates on new patterns that are released on the blog, as well as like, mm, like uh, we'll call them re-releases. <laughs> recovery patterns, patterns that we've recovered from the depths of external hard drives and everything else and gotten back online. Um, we'll do a roundup of that about once a month. Anyway, so I was thinking about all the different ways that I could kind of like, what, what to do for Mend It Better, you know, for the 10 year anniversary and it's out of print. I do have a bunch of copies available. Um, that I purchased for myself for my own distribution, but it's no longer available through your like national booksellers. If you want a copy for your library, I love it when libraries have my book and it's such a great reference book for new menders. Um, just let me know, put me in contact with your library. I will send them a free copy because I just, I love if this book could live in libraries. Anyway, okay. So that aside, um, I'm gonna make a note that I actually said that. So it's like, <laughs> so in case someone <laughs> messaged me, I won't be like, who are you? What are you talking about? Anyway, um, and there was a bunch of contributors to Mend It Better. And there's also like, I can't remember how many chapters, but there's about enough topics in the book that I could kind of cover a chapter of comment, uh, a chapter of content each month through a live stream. So I kind of decided, well, I did decide, I'm gonna do two things. One, actually, I'm gonna do three things. <laughs> um, one, I'm gonna host this live stream every single month. I'm committing to now through December. So 11 live streams. And each one of those, I'm gonna cover a different mending topic. And because I kind of assume that there's not going to be a ton of people here. I want something to kind of keep myself occupied and share with you. So while I'm mending, I'm also going to be talking to you about a different creative entrepreneur topic. Uh, it's something I'm pretty passionate about and I feel like I, I want to share with you what I've learned over the last 10 years of being a creative entrepreneur. Actually over the last 20 years. Oh my gosh, that's so wild. Okay. So then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to transform that into a podcast. So I'll be explaining what I'm doing, both talking about it, kind of describing what's going on. So people listening to the podcast can kind of have a sense of the mending that's happening, but we're really, we're going to be talking about creative entrepreneurial topics. I also wanted to give people a form to ask me questions because lately I've been getting quite a few requests locally as well as online. Um, can so-and-so meet with you and 
and they want to start a business. They don't know how. And so both like to get my thoughts, because a lot of times I feel like I'm almost repeating myself. So to like get what I know and what I can share out there so I can just be like, hey, you know, I actually recorded a live stream about that. You should go check it out. And if they have questions, you know, definitely follow up. But also give people a form to like come chat with me live and let me know what their questions are. And in the moment as I'm discussing, like today I'm going to be talking about planning. Um, you know, let me know what their questions are about planning or what I'm doing or, or my approach. The other thing that I'm doing is every contributor that I could track down and get a hold of who is willing and able, uh, I'm going to be interviewing them. And that is going to become the podcast. So the podcast will kind of have like two episodes a month. One will be a recording of this live stream. The other one, which will be a little bit more raw and unedited. The other one will be an interview with one of the contributors to the book. There was 21 right now about, I think seven or eight have agreed to interview me or inter interview me, what am I? Have agreed for me to interview them. And so we'll talk about how the craft industry has changed, how the craft industry helped them get to where they are now, why they are still doing it, what they're excited for there, or how they've taken those skills to into a new industry. About half are still in the craft pattern industry, either as bloggers, authors, um, course content creators, and about half have transitioned to a, a completely different industry or a like parallel industry. It's really exciting because these people were so, I mean, a lot of them, I asked them to be in my book because I really admired them, right? <laughs> like, that's why I asked them. So they mentored me in one way or another. Um, and I'm really excited to reconnect to them because many of them I haven't talked to since the book was published. So that's thing two I'm doing this year. Thing three is I'm actually hosting a bunch of in-person events. Each month I'll probably have some kind of something planned, either a speaking presentation locally, talking about creative entrepreneurism in combination of craft leftovers, my art business, and uh, Little Woods Herbal. Or I'll be hosting an open studio where people can come to my studio and check out the zine distro. I sell not just my own zines, but other people too. That's the Roach Motel Zine Fest was actually an, an event created by the Roach Motel Zine Distro group. Um, me and some of my friends who love zines, that's pretty much it. So if not that, so I'll do that as like, if I don't have another in-person event planned. This month, I'm super excited, just next week, I'm actually gonna be hosting a mending circle at Dog Eared Books, which is a lo really great local used bookstore. Um, I'm gonna make a note to myself to link to them. You can actually order their books online and get them shipped to you. I really recommend it. Um, they are amazing. Like just, it's, it's one of those things where at first they opened their business across the street. I was so jealous. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I feel like a mess compared to how cool they are. And then I got to meet them and talk to them. And they're just like me. I mean, not just like me, but like they feel the same way about the people around them and that same sense of like, I'm so excited for what I'm doing, but I also feel like it's, you know, a little crazy right now, but man, they're so good. And the events that they put on are so good. So I'm really excited. They invited me to, to come do this, to celebrate the 10 year anniversary of End It Better at their location. They have a lovely like loft space with big overstuffed chairs and stuff. And we'll be hanging out, mending. It's going to be kind of like a social meet and greet mending circle but of course if you have questions about mending or whatever I'm, I'm gonna answer them and if you want a book signed absolutely um I'm hoping to work with like the Ames Public Library we'll see fingers crossed I'm not sure what their calendar's like yet we're still kind of trying to figure it out and there's a couple local knitting shops um and quilt shops and things that I'm hoping to get to do an event for for the book here in Iowa. So if you're in Iowa, honestly, if you're within like four hours of Ames, 
maybe even seven. I would absolutely, my hair's being crazy. Oh my gosh. All right, there we go. <laughs> my bangs are like falling in front of my face. Um, it's terrible when I'm like looking at myself while recording this because I'm like, uh, oh no. <laughs> like I'm making a stupid face. Gosh, I'm terrible at this. But it's the very first one. It's going to not be great. It'll be better, you know, six months from now on my sixth one of these. I'm sure I'm going to have it dialed in. Anyway, so I, I really would love to do a live in-person event each month for the book, focusing on mending, either teaching a workshop, giving a presentation or whatever. So if you want me to come to your bookstore, library, small group, the only thing I ask is that you pay for my traveling fees. Um, you know, I figure I'll bring a couple cases of books and I can pay for my time through book sales and zine sales. Um, and that kind of thing. Cause I love to get out there and meet y'all. So pretty much from Kansas city to Omaha, to Minneapolis, to Chicago, to St. Louis is pretty easy driving for me. That's the wonderful thing about being on 8035, right? Um, so just let me know, just reach out. If you can email me at craftleftovers at gmail.com. I wasn't expecting to give that plit pitch or to offer to donate books to the library, but there you go. I'm feeling, <laughs> just feeling like I want to put stuff out there right now. Anyway, um, so yes, that's kind of what's on the horizon. And I'm really excited for these three things for Mend It Better and uh, to kind of like, I don't know, just, just get back out there with it. And it's been interesting. You know, you pour so much into a book, you look at it so much, you kind of fall out of love at it, <laughs> with it <laughs> while you're working on it. And given a bit of time, I've I've been reading back through it, looking through it. I'm like, wow, it's like somebody else wrote it and I'm, I've fallen back in love with it, you know? And, and I think I just, uh, <laughs> it, it was a lot of work. It was really intense at the end too. Um, but now I'm like, wow, it's such a great resource. It really is. It's wonderful for your beginning mender. You know, it's, it's a great gift for a college student and you can get it in a digital edition still and, and you can get the print, there we go, print copy for me. Anyway, okay, enough about that. Um, let's see, any other updates about craft leftovers and stuff? Um, I'm working on a new pattern. I've previewed it on, you want to see? Okay, I've previewed it on Instagram a bit and I've got the one, so the way I do like mitten or sock patterns is I'll do the first one and take notes and then I'll write out the pattern and I'll make the second one to see if it works. So here we go, first one. It's this really squishy, fluffy, warm, silky soft merino. And I'm happy to say that I made a few adjustments that I think made it the fit a lot better on the second one, excuse me. And there was some interesting <laughs> increase issues around the thumb. I was kind of like in pattern writing, there's like these basics for uh, like knitting structures. And so I was kind of following this formula that's pretty standard. It just was not working out. So. I reworked the thumb increases on this one and I'm a lot happier with it. And I'm gonna do a Kitchener stitch to close this off. <laughs> you guys are gonna laugh with me hopefully on this. I forgot how to do a Kitchener stitch. I'm gonna have to look it up. Getting it started is always fussy. But yeah, I just like, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's been such a long time since I've closed the toe of a sock. Um, or top of the mitten. Anyway, so that will be making an appearance on the blog, hopefully in the next couple weeks here. So I'm excited about that. And that's kind of our plan is, hi Gregory's tail. That's kind of our plan is to release a pattern a month. And I think that that's a pretty good pace for me right now with uh, my other workload things. Then, um, yeah, we're also gonna be He's getting into the cabinet now. Oh my goodness. Uh, we're also gonna be doing a roundup of the patterns we're able to get back up on the archive 
every <laughs> my bangs are just like a little too long okay um i'm gonna stop fussing with them uh let's see we're going to we're gonna do a roundup of patterns every every i think we decided every first thursday of the month um, we'd send out a roundup of everything that's back up live on the website. And you can always check the blog to see what's newest. We kind of pin it to the top once we've reinserted the pattern. Okay, that's all the housekeeping. It was a lot of housekeeping for this very first live stream because there's a lot of new stuff happening all at once. I'm gonna take a sip of tea here. Hopefully you won't hear it too much. This mug is by one of my favorite local ceramic artists down in Des Moines. I'll put a link in the show notes for that. She's really cool. I met her doing, um, I want to say it was like Black Market Friday or something down in Des Moines. Okay, so I said annual planning and mending. That's what we're doing. Let's get to it. Let's get on with it. Okay, so first thing is, like I said, well, first thing is I'm going to change my view so you can actually see what I'm working on, hopefully. Can we zoom it in? Nope. There we go. All right. Um, so first thing is I'm just going to remove <laughs> the fishing hook that's holding this thing together. And the there might be some staples and things in here. So that's just going to take me a little bit. So I'm just going to be working these things out while I chat about planning. It's not quite the beginning of the year, though I find that a lot of people like myself they start thinking about annual planning in January, and then it's more around February or March that they actually sit down and put something together. Oh my gosh. This is funny. <laughs> I forgot thread. Okay, I'm going to use this bobbin thread. Oh my goodness. It'll work fine. It's just a generic all-purpose thread. But yeah, I legit forgot my spool of thread. I knew I was forgetting something. I was like all fussing about needles and scissors and thread. There it is. Well, at least this will be easy for you to see. <laughs> this is all going to be hidden work, so um, I'm not too worried about it being such a ridiculous color compared to the brown. Although a brown thread or like a dark charcoal gray would be better. I'm going to be using a size 10 needle. These are also known as sharps. These are actually the needles that I used for the book too. They're just a really good all-purpose hand sewing needle. I'm going to throw the needle around a couple times, potentially lose it. That's why I have a whole pack. Get it threaded. For something like this, I like to do a double strand with a double overhand knot at the end. Just keep it really nice and simple. And it allows me to make a really secure fasten at the beginning. Okay, so annual planning. For me, the holidays is a really intense time. And I think that's not uncommon. I don't really have time to make an annual plan in December. Ideally, you'd have an annual plan done before you start your year if you want it to be like a 2022 plan. So I don't think about it that way. I think about annual planning as more like when it happens, just be looking 12 to 18 months in advance. It doesn't matter if you're doing annual planning in December or July, you know, some people do annual planning around their birthday. For me, after the end of the holidays is a great time for me to do annual planning. Oh, so this was sewn with a sewing machine and the actual thread has broken. So if I don't, I'm going to take each so that one end is essentially a bobbin thread and one end is a it's really intense light. Come on. It's still rather intense. It's because of the black. I'm going to click this off and see what that looks like for y'all. 
a little better. Still pretty blown out. Well, I'm sorry. That'll be test two for um, lighting for next time. Anyway, so one of these is the bobbin thread and one of these is the top thread, which I'm, well, I'm not recalling the name of. And to lock this off, I'm actually just gonna do an overhand knot so that way it doesn't continue to pull out and unfurl. What I'll also do is I'll start my stitching down here and kind of past where that thread is tied off. And then I'll look up here and see if that, yeah, it is the same thing that's going on up here. There we go. So we'll just work this back a little bit and tie it together. So yeah, so if you're watching this in July or June, annual planning is still relevant. It's never a bad time to take a look at the next 12, 18 months of the year and to kind of figure out like what's on your plate and assess how best to accomplish the things that you'd like to accomplish, but also how best to kind of keep ease in your life. It's real easy for clutter to move in both physically as well as just time, like things that take your time up. And some things can be edited, some things you just, you have to figure out how to make it work better for you. Yeah, so there's another big hole over here in the seam, so I'm gonna tie that off too. Most likely what happened is that this is an old dress. It looks like it's probably from, I don't know, sometime in the 60s or 70s. It's wild to think that it's like 50 to 60 years old. So this little cotton thread probably doesn't have a nylon core and it probably just broke over time um, just through moisture and friction and stress so anyway so the first thing that I do when I'm embarking on this great thing called annual planning is I write down everything everything that I'm already obligated to. Like, you know, <laughs> and it, it depends on your own needs and personality, how far you want to take this. But I do things like I'm obligated to Lucy, you know, to, to make meals, to take her to school, which I love. And I will always make time for that. Like that's really important to me um, and so I'm going to structure the rest of my life around that and that is really the point of this first capture is like what are your non-negotiable things that have to happen no matter what is it working out do you have a yoga class you love is it you know like D, D every Sunday you know who you are <laughs> Actually, there's a couple people I know who do that every Sunday. So like, you know, what's, what is that, those non-negotiables? Sometimes it's like a big project, like a big non-negotiable for me this year is doing this live stream. It's something I really wanted to see happen. All right. So now we have flipping back and forth. Sorry. So I've tied off my thread. And now I'm just gonna, gonna take some pins and I am going to pin it together. So that way my stitching is in theory straight. Well, no, maybe. Hmm, there's two approaches. I could pin it like this and work a straight like running stitch or I could work it like this and I could do like a ladder stitch and kind of close this up. I could also do a combination. I like the idea of using this really sharp crease as my guide. So I think I'm going to pin it down here and then I'll work from the other side. Okay. 
And by down here, I mean right below where the stitch line is. Maybe I'll take a screenshot of that or something. So I can show you on the blog too with the show notes. Okay, so then I've got my needle and thread and I'll go ahead and get started stitching. And once I get started stitching, we'll get back to the annual planning. I'm wondering if I should actually zoom this in a little bit more, but with digital zooming, as we found, it gets a little, it's a little pixelated. Hmm. What do you think? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to do a little running stitch over where that old thread is, and then I'll come up and do the ladder stitch where there's no thread. Okay. So you got all those non-negotiables, and that might just be an epically big list. And now here is where I'm going to show you something and kind of like talk you through it just a little bit here. Got some gloves. So what I did... Things I'm obligated to winter, spring, summer, fall, and I just kind of block it out. I've got a big piece of paper here, and I just kind of made some lines and labeled some things winter, spring, summer, fall, and then I kind of dropped those things into this box. Now then, um, I just had this moment of like, am I actually streaming? Can anyone even hear me? This is my microphone on, all those lovely things. Anyway, and then I do the same by, by the month. So for me, I got an Iowa Arts Council grant this year and I'm doing this big tapestry weaving project about bird migration. And so I've kind of got some definitive deadlines on certain months related to that. I also have things like the AIM Studio Tour and Vacation and Lucy's birthday, spring break, interviews, um, like big events, but also big deadlines. A little less minutia of the day-to-day -day on this list. And then kind of ongoing, and then I have another thing that's more, it's not even that there's a deadline or it's a specific season, it's more ongoing big projects. So like ongoing big projects would be painting the house and little woods in general, um, doing an open studio. And I've also am working on completing my advanced certificate in clinical herbalism with the herbal Academy of new England. And that's a, it's a lot of study and reading and some tests and some labs. And so like, that's going to take me the rest of the year. And so that's how I kind of map it out. And it just gives me the sense of, I can start to see where things are pooling. And then I can ask myself, do I have to do that this month? So for instance, with some of the projects we were planning from Littlewoods, we had a ton of stuff in January, February, March. I had also been planning on a big project um, an, another big Little Woods project, which is creating a course for our mixology classes, like an online course. And I had initially said I would start filming it <laughs> in March. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like looking at it this way by these like grouped categories, I'm like, in March, there is so much already happening. Do I have to film this course in March? And the answer is no. So we moved the whole thing to May and that worked amazing. And it gives me a lot more time to work on the outline and all the minutia of the class, as well as um, get things settled in the shop. And as well as, you know, like I'm actually taking a course on how to make an online course. <laughs> <laughs> which I find is kind of funny. 
taking a course for an online course. I'm taking an online course to know how to make an online course, but it makes sense because then I guess you get to know the platform and everything and exactly how to use it from the student side too. Uh, this fabric is so stretchy. I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do a straight running stitch and then I'm going to do a ladder stitch back over it to kind of lock it together. Hey, Bob. <laughs> Bob is my dog and he just started snoring really loud in the corner of my studio. He's so cute. We went on a walk this morning and he was very good. Um, and I think now he's a little tuckered out. Anyway, so then now, once I get these, like, general broad categories of things, then comes the next step, which is the calendar. I, let's see, I got this calendar print off from Cassie, Cassie's Croggins? Cassie Scroggins? Don't know how to say it. I'll, like everything else, I'll put it in the show notes for you. And it's just, it's like pre-laid out 2022 blank calendar with all the dates. So it just made it really easy to print something off. There's no clutter. There's no, there's no nothing. And any of those Oh, I guess it doesn't really matter. It's a calendar. Boom, done. That's enough. Anyway, um, the lighting was not focusing very well. And <laughs> everything just looked totally washed out. So I print that off. And then all these kind of monthly things with specific dates or deadlines, like uh, Art Walk or Little Woods Anniversary or... Lucy's birthday, for instance, vacation dates, if we know them, I go ahead and start blocking them off. And then at the bottom of the page, I put any of those quarterly things or things that are happening during the month that aren't necessarily, um, they're not necessarily like deadlines. It's more, this would be good to get done this month. For instance, this month we're organizing and cleaning the basement for Little Woods to increase our storage capacity so we can order in another pallet of botanicals for the shop that we love and blend with and use a ton of, a literal ton. And so we want to get that done now because we're going to be having a pallet delivered probably next month, maybe even sooner. Um... So it's not that there's a specific date tied to it, but it it would be really good to get that done, you know, before the palette was due to show up. High concentration. I'm going to be turning. Okay, I have done a series of really loose straight stitches. Nice and easy. No one's going to see these stitches, so I am not being careful. Now I'm going to bring my needle to the front. And now we will just kind of go back and forth and close this up really nice and tightly and evenly a bit more careful. I'm not sure. Well, you know, I'm just going to look at it. Huh. Here in my book, I mend it better. I really, come on, you just, there we go. Oh, not blown out, all right. That's my grandma and grandpa, Phyllis and Milt Powell. Chapter three, that's what I'm looking for. So in chapter three, Stitching Smarts, oh my gosh, look at that. Oh my goodness, 10 years ago, wow. So under Stitching Smarts, I feel like this will be easier for you to see what I'm talking about here. 
I'm gonna really laugh if this particular stitch is not in here. Ah, the ladder stitch, okay. Ladder stitch, three easy steps. You're gonna secure your thread with a knot. Then you're gonna make a small stitch on the opposite folded edge, cross back to the first folded edge and take another small stitch. Keep repeating to make a ladder of stitches between the two folded edges. Fold the thread to tighten up the stitches. So yeah, there you go, ladder stitch. That was way easier than trying to show you the craziness that's going on in this dress with like the high contrast and crazy red thread and white thread and all that jazz. Because I already closed up my um, seam, we're just going to kind of be going back and forth. But the idea is you're taking a little stitch on one side and then kind of switching to the other side and making another little stitch. So yeah, so once you get all those deadlines, dates, and etc. in there, how do you actually manage it? Like, how do you actually implement it? And how do I actually um, get things done? For this, I am actually going to refer you to Creative Live and a class by Lisa Cogden, whom <laughs> I've been following her since I started a craft blog in 2006, about a year after she started a craft blog. <laughs> I think she's been blogging. That has now turned into something entirely different and beautiful and wonderful. What she was doing then was beautiful and wonderful, and what she's doing now is amazing and wonderful and all that jazz. Uh, it's been so cool to see her career just explode over the last decade. Um, anyway, during a really difficult time during the pandemic, I was, I was drowning. It felt like, I mean, I've always kind of, I've always done a lot of projects and it's never, you know, you, you get yourself overwhelmed, but that's also a bit how you learn your boundaries, right? Well, during the pandemic, about 70% of my staff at Littlewoods quit or got sick or some combination thereof. And Jason and I were working 16 hours a week or a week. That'd be nothing. We're working 16 hour days. Like he would go and he would work his full-time job and then he would come help and I would work yeah like it was like eight to eight or I'd come home eat dinner and then I'd go back to work because at the same time we lost most of our staff we also uh we also saw this huge increase in sales in in tea spices and medicinal herbs which is great except for that it was so overwhelming. During a time that was just like by its nature overwhelming, it was really, it was very hard. And it was, you know, I, I kept feeling like, oh, I should just be grateful that my, my business isn't gonna go under. But the truth is, is that the business was so intensely stressful that I, I really did think about just quitting. But Two, two things happened that kept that from happening. One was that one of the, two of the other business owners on Main Street who were really struggling because their businesses could not be open and they didn't have an online store like we did, um, they temporarily came to work for me. And so I got really overqualified, wonderful help. And every day was like this. Every day we worked together was like a business owner's boot camp. It was amazing. It was, I'm so grateful to those two wonderful women who have since reopened their businesses and are thriving again, which is so, I'm so happy to see that. Then the other thing that happened is on a whim, they were just like a random Instagram ad. I saw a course on Creative Live for Lisa Cogden's class about workflow. 
and organization and like time is like time management and workflow or something like that. And she talked about her system for keeping track of projects. And I was like, well, Lisa has it going on. Like they have the volume of work they have done over the last decade that she's done over the last decade is astounding. It's something to aspire to. And on top of that, she does like these awesome like gravel rides. Um, I think she's done, I don't know. She's just, she stayed very active. She's a swimmer. Um, I swear I just listened to her podcast and read her blog. I'm not like I'm not like following her around like yeah. Anyway. Um this is something anybody can find out, okay? That's what I'm saying. If you just take her class, she talks about it. Anyway, so <laughs> you should go look her up. She's pretty cool. Um In a lot of ways I I feel like Though I've never met her, and I've never talked to her, and I've never, I don't think, had a personal communication with her. Um, I feel a, kin a kinship to her. I feel like she's, you know, about five to ten years ahead of me in her life, and has about five to ten more years of experience and know-how and, and everything else. And... Uh, that she thinks about the world in a similar way as I do, um, that she, she craves, um, well, I'll just say, I don't know what her personal motivations are. I crave a sense of, I want to get a lot of things done. I want to do a lot. I'm very much like, um, Am I not remembering his name? He does Todd, is it Todd Henry? He does Accidental Creative. And he has this book called Die Empty. Like, I want to die empty, right? Like, I want to put it all out there. By the time I die, everything that I was meant to do, could do, want to do, need to do, is done, you know? And I'm sure that, like, with everything I do, there's always, like, a million more things I have ideas for. But that I really give it my best. But... I also know to be able to do that, I also need to take care of myself to make sure that I'm restoring my well of creativity and energy and inspiration and all that jazz. So doing things like training for a triathlon and, um, you know, spending time with Lucy going to the art museum, not for research, but just to go and be in awe of <laughs> master works of art, you know, like going for a walk in the wood, not because I'm, not because I'm training, but because it's just lovely to be outside. Um, you know, like that is really important too, to me as well. And I feel like that's a kinship I have with Lisa. It She very much values, like, she puts a lot out there, but at the same time I find that she's a rather private person too, and I I value that. And I, I see that as a real strength and something to admire and look up to and strive for for myself. So when she offered up this workflow time management class, I was like, yeah, <laughs> tell, me your, <laughs> tell me your secrets, Lisa. How do you do this? Like, how do you... How do you even, you know, try to have a work-life balance? And, um, and it was great. She walks through this process of having a running to-do list, which is like a giant spreadsheet that you just kind of put everything into. And it's got your dates and kind of deadlines, main contacts, and that kind of thing. And then... She has her kind of like daily and weekly check-in. So when I did the test for the live stream, I talked about this annual planning, and I've got about 10 more minutes here 
that I'm going to be rambling on about this. And um, so I think you all, if this is something you struggle with, and if what I said appeals to you, you should go check it out. So what I've developed over the last year of kind of working with her method is what it looks like. I'm not, I don't remember what it exactly looks like for her each week, but for me, what it's morphed into is, oh my goodness, and I'm just about done mending this. This is perfect timing. I don't, you can probably tell I somewhat planned this, but I did not completely plan this. And so that I'm almost done with mending and I'm about to show you kind of like my, my final thing here and we have 10 minutes to go like that's wow okay I couldn't have planned it so well all right I'm going to tie this off and then I'm going to show you what I mean so like Lisa kind of said all of these things I put into my spreadsheet and I assign like the dates and months to it so the calendar is kind of to help me visually see, and I don't know that she has you plug anything into a paper calendar. I think she's pretty digital, but for me, the visual nature of seeing the amount of tasks each week, month, quarter, etc., helps me to see where I'm overwhelming myself and I'm going to get myself into trouble. I'm going to go ahead and knot that again just for good measure. I'm really excited. If this dress wouldn't give you all a headache, I would wear it the next time I mended. I was kind of hoping I would get to mend my sleeves. I don't know if you can tell the hem totally needs to get like tucked in and do like a little line stitch, but maybe that'll be next time. Okay, so this is repairing a seam, a straight seam, done. Huh, look at that. Okay, let's turn it inside out and see if it's a buckled up mess. Oh. Hi, okay, I just switched the camera back to a front view. All right, let's see it. Not so shabby. I mean, it just looks like a seam. Some things I love to do visual mending for, especially like darning. But for something like this, I'm just kind of in awe of its glorious vintage nature that I just kind of want it to be what it is. So just kind of doing a invisible mend there. Oh my goodness. This is so exciting. I have my dress back. Thanks for doing that with me. I'm going to have another sip of tea here. It's like a green tea from Little Woods. It's called Spring Equinox. It'll be back out next month. You can't get it yet. <laughs> it's mine only. Or if you already have it in your pantry. Anyway, um, okay, so I also dump everything into my workflow sheet. Like uh, yesterday, I got contacted about doing a talk for the Philanthropic Educational Organization. It's like a women's group. And they raise a lot of funds for scholarships, for state level scholarships and, um, oh, I'm sorry, I just bumped the microphone. And they really just like to know what's going on in the community and get connected and do good stuff. Um, it's a bit of a social club too. So they, I'm gonna go talk to them about tea and about owning a business and that kind of stuff. It'll be pretty fun. Anyway, that is something I will lose sight of in like two seconds. I'll lose the note that I wrote it down. Like I took notes while I was on the phone with this person and I will lose those notes and then I will just be screwed and then it'll sideline me because I'll they'll call to check in like a week ahead of time and I'll be like, oh crap, I forgot about it. And that's what was happening during the pandemic. I just felt like I was constantly getting sideswiped like, oh, oh deadline I forgot about taxes or two you know like all this crazy stuff and the workflow it, 
it serves kind of, I use it for three things. One, I capture everything. So I, I'll take that note and I'll actually put it into my spreadsheet. I'll put who the contact is. I'll put who the, when the deadline is. I'll put when I need to follow up with them um, and the topic of the presentation and those kinds of things. Then, so it's like a capturing. The second thing I do is every, every month I kind of check in with myself, like what's coming up this month. I'm gonna show you this, here we go. And then every week, about a week before the week, I make my page. One of the things that Lisa talked about was instead of having a planner or a sketchbook, which I have tried in the past and I've always found it too cumbersome. I just want one document. Um, she has just her sketchbook and I was like, oh yes, that is for me. And so I just have my sketchbook. So sometimes in a week I'll go through a dozen pages between weeks. Other times I It'll just be a planner thing back to back. And so <clears throat> for myself, I decided right here, I write down things that I want to get done this week that don't have a deadline attached. So I look through my workflow and I put all the things on my work from my workflow that need to get done this week here. Then anything that comes up during this week that I need to take care of, but it's not my workflow yet, but it needs to happen like next week, I'll put in the next week column. Then each day I kind of, you know, you start off your week and you have maybe specific deadlines. So if I have a deadline specific to workflow, I'll go ahead and dump it in here. And, and for me, this works. I tend to put when I'm doing home lunches for Lucy, I'll put my workouts in here. And I'll also put my meal plan for dinners in here. Um, maybe I'll take you through the creation of these pages another time. I don't think we quite have enough time for me to go in detail, but let me just... Oh, I also do like... I'm gonna hide what my specific things are. But I have this like... It's kind of like a habit tracker. It's totally a habit tracker of things that I would like to do every day. And it's more to just remind me that I was hoping to have these commitments to myself. You know, so it's honestly, it's things like work out, um, drink water, <laughs> uh, you know, stretch your body, draw stuff. It's nothing crazy. But yeah, so that's kind of incorporated into here too for me. It's a bit of a bullet journal hybrid. There's also things like, you know, I'll sketch stuff. Just like Gregory hanging out. Cute little back of his head. So let me see if I can find a really good one where it's like, oh yeah, so here's one where it's like super filled in. And you can see there's a bit of time. Oh yeah, and then I have this idea but I haven't actually been able to make it happen yet, that each month I would kind of like make a page for the month. I did that for January. I didn't quite take it. I feel like I made one for February, but maybe I didn't. Maybe I will. Anyway, so then, you know, here's another spread. It gets a little crazy. Sometimes I get fancy with it and color it in. Other times I like I start it and I don't even actually use it really all that much. Um, it just kind of depends on the week. And that's okay. Like, if you don't need it to get your stuff done, that's fine. Or if you're on vacation, also fine. But it's also, it's really lovely just to have a place to capture things. So that's kind of how I keep track of, of what I'm doing. I also use a Google Calendar, but the Google Calendar is more like, work schedule, deadline oriented things. And so what I do every single week, it's usually on a Wednesday, I make my calendar for the following week. And then I look at my Google calendar for like my work schedule and any kind of like personal deadlines, like um, 
you know, stuff with Lucy, that kind of thing goes on there. And then I look at my workflow to kind of see like, what things am I committed to that I need to make sure to be working on. And, and then I also look at those like big quarterly, monthly kind of projects and, and I schedule time for those during my week. I look at like pockets of where those pockets of times are that I can kind of attend to those. But for me, through this whole process, the really big thing, and maybe I didn't even mention this, I mentioned it in the test that I, I did a, a live stream test a couple weeks ago with some friends. And, um, and I feel like I brought this home a little bit more of like, once you write all that stuff down, it's not just about looking to where you can like move it to. It's also about where, what you can eliminate. And the things that you can eliminate are completely personal. There's no right or wrong answer for anybody. For some people, it could be, you know, maybe for right now, for how intense things are, instead of going to the gym four times a week, I'm gonna go two times a week and take two walks instead because a walk won't take me as long. I won't have to take a shower afterwards, but it's still moving my body and it's good. For other people, it could be like, you know, maybe I don't need to cook a huge meal during the week at all. Maybe spaghetti and tacos is good enough. <laughs> and that's like where I am right now. It's like, I'm going to do one new recipe, fancy dinner each week. That's good. I don't need to try to pull that out of my hat every day. Because um, that's not... It's more important that my family sits down and eats together than it is that I have a gourmet meal every night, you know? So like, it's more important for me to like sit down and get quality time with Lucy and spend less time on cooking most days of the week. Um, but again, like that's, that's my personal choice right now. And in a different family that might not make any sense at all. Or like the kids might not even get home until, you know, five cause they're in, in practice or whatever the heck we might not even have kids. That is also an option. So it, it's really very personal on like what you edit out. For me, one of the things I edited out this last year was I promised, <laughs> I promised Jason and my employees at Littlewoods, I would not be on the board of directors for any other organization <laughs> for at least one year and that I wouldn't commit into, to any big volunteer projects for at least one year because I had spent oh, four years putting a lot of time and effort into um, a couple organizations. And when my tenure was up, they were like, can you just take like a year off and see what that's like? And I'm like, yeah, all right. And the funny thing is, is that I was like, oh, that was actually kind of nice. <laughs> I got this grant. I'm doing this Men Better 10 year anniversary, Craft Lovers relaunch podcast, everything else. I'm like, maybe I should take one more year off doing any like big volunteer projects. Um, <laughs> and that was the right choice for me. That might not, that might be your non-negotiable for somebody else. And that's okay. So it's more like just looking at what you are really all committed to and, and what you can let go, what is non-negotiable, or what you can alter to make it work better. Like initially I'd planned on doing... <laughs> You guys are going to laugh at this. I plan on doing a live stream every single week. And, um, and I realized that just wasn't a realistic goal for, for my workload right now. And that's okay. Like two things a month is good. It's a really good start. I can always increase it later once it's easier. Right now it's hard. Doing a live stream for me, <laughs> it like took me the whole morning to get ready. Um, and that's okay too. Like, so once it gets a little bit easier, you know, maybe I'll, maybe I will do it every week, but for right now, once a month is perfect. And <clears throat> I'm really excited to be here with you and to, um, you know, have gotten to say what I, I wanted to say about annual planning and about organizing my workflow and getting some things done. And introducing you to my craft cat, who is meowing a lot right now. I don't know what his deal is. I think he just wants pets. 
He's like, I can't believe you're down here and you're not paying attention to me. Oh my goodness, he's gonna keep meowing until I pick him up. Come here, man. Okay, back. Yeah, so I think that's really it. Um, I'll be working on show notes this afternoon. They should probably be up tomorrow morning on craftleftovers.com. If you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe, ring the bell and all that good stuff. Um, leave a review or comment. I'll be checking in on comments at least once a week and make sure to follow up um, on any questions you might have. And Gregory is definitely sending you off with a big happy purr. Thank you all for stopping by either now or later. I really appreciate it. And um, I don't know. I guess that's it. Until next time.